Hey everybody, Kirk here. This is an introduction to our YouTube channel that we're gonna start. It'll have a lot of material on homesteading. We just bought 200 acres by uh, near Hayward, Wisconsin. And uh, there'll be videos on different projects involving that and uh, a lot of deer hunting videos. Um, now I'm no expert on anything. Um, jack of all trades, master of none. But uh, actually I'm a master electrician. So I got that covered. But uh, a lot of land management. I'm trying to uh, f change the, the woods around here and make it better for the, the deer. It was like a park-like setting before. So um, we're doing a lot of hinge cutting, food plots, um, transition cuts with, with, with hinge cutting. And uh, we also hope to build a home here, cordwood style construction. <clears throat> There'll be a sauna, cordwood sauna we're gonna start off with. And uh, all that type of thing. So it should be a good time and take uh, quite a few years to get done. So let's start here. I'm gonna take you through a tour of our land. Um, the food plots I got going on, I just started them last winter. Had a bulldozer come in and uh, make five of them. Um, I think I have nine different food plots on 200 acres. And that may sound like a lot, but it only adds up to two and a half acres of plantable area, which actually isn't that much because they say you need like five to 10%. Well, all of our our uh, land is wooded, so that would uh, that's a lot of money. So we got uh, five new ones um, bulldozed in. We've also done three bedding areas with hinge cutting. Um, created that this uh, last couple months. It's April 29th right now, um, and uh, I'm a little disappointed right now. It should be like a month ago. It should look like this like a month ago and it, it's April, so we're about a month behind. So I won't be doing anything to these food plots until it dries up, which looks like it will be around next year at this time. So um, right now I'll take you through some of the bedding areas and the food plots and uh, show you what they look like now. And then as it progresses, I'll show you videos of what it looks like and um, what I'm gonna plant in them. Um, I wanted to plant red clover and buckwheat and rye grain to kind of build the soil in a, in a few different ones, but I don't even know if that's going to happen because uh, come fall, I wanted to plant like uh, some brassica, rape, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, we'll start off with the uh, first food plot. Um, I hope to plant fruit trees in each food plot, so five food plots. I was going to plant cherry trees in one, apples in another one, uh, peaches in another one, pears, and plums. And uh, that way it'll give the, the deer a little added candy in each food plot, and then I'll be able to name it that. You know what I mean? Cherry plot, plum plot, and uh, that's my plan anyway, as of now. Could change. But uh, this first one will be the plum plot. And it's the smallest one closest to the road. Um, there's a bedding area about 150 yards behind us. And uh, I hope the deer come into this plot first thing during daylight hours. So it should be a good spot. And I can hunt it with a north wind. Um, I'll hunt on the south side, hunt it with a north wind, and be able to get to it because 20 yards in front of me is our driveway which our land, um, our cabin, is about a quarter mile from the road. So I have the driveway runs the length of our lot line. <clears throat> and I'll be able to ride my bike or walk um, and get right in here real quiet um, to the tree stand. So I'll show you that now and then I'll go to the bedding area, the first bedding area that we hinge cut and uh, we can check that out. Okay, this is the first food plot. There's the driveway. There's a small trail that comes in here that I hopefully will plant um, once it dries out. And this is the first one. It's, it's pretty small. 
eighth an acre. And you can see how wet it is right now. We had this bulldozed and they, the areas where the trees were are now holes with water in them. So it's going to take a while for it to dry up and I can get the tractor in here and pop these rocks out of here and smooth it out. Um, I had him push all the dirt on this side of the plot to make these mounds. And behind that, in this area, is a bedding area about 100 yards away, maybe a little more. And now that mound of brush and debris is screening the deer for when I come in here to get in my tree stand. And the tree stand will probably be in that large oak tree right there. That's what I have envisioned right now though. So this is the first one and uh, it's the plum plot. And we'll come back to it when uh, we get started on um, cleaning these up. So this is the woods right behind the plum plot going toward the bedding area. You can see where it starts here, where I started hinge cutting. It's about 100 yards away from the plum plot. And uh, each one of these bedding areas, I have three on the land that I made, are about an acre and a half size right now. I might add to them later on, but that's what I started off with this year. When I hinge cut this, it made a lot of browse for the deer, so they were feeding in here, um, which was perfect, because it was a hard winter this year. It's the end of April right now, and uh, you can see there isn't much growth as of yet. All right, so this is inside the bedding area that we hinge cut this year. It took me a day to hinge cut the majority of this. Another day with a, with a buddy of mine to uh, kind of fine tune it. Um, but this is what the woods looked like before. And this is about as thick as it gets on our land, other than our uh, tamarack black spruce swamps that we have. But you can see the mess we made. Now I'm going to come in during late spring, summer with a chainsaw and clean this up a bit. I'll make trails through here and really fine tune some of these spots. But I don't know what it's going to look like until the leaves start growing back. Um, some of these trees obviously are going to die. They weren't hinge cut the greatest. Um, some trees hinge cut better than others. A lot of these are silver or uh, sugar maple, and uh, they don't hinge cut well. Um, I would say five, five inch diameter. They'll they'll come down pretty decent. Anything bigger than that, and uh, they pretty much snap off. There's a lot of ash. Ash weren't too bad to hinge cut. Uh, red oak, those actually were probably the the easiest as long as they were within that five inch diameter range. But uh, we'll walk through here and take a quick look at all of it. I'd say it's about 70, 80 yards wide. And the road is over here in this direction toward the south about 150 yards away. So I have to cut different areas as escape routes. You should have two to three escape routes in any bedding area. Now this is one large section, but there will be smaller bedding areas inside of this. So 
for doe groups and buck beds. The bucks will bed individually and the does like to bed as a group. Um, at least that's what I read. I read a book and I'll show you the author and, and the book I read on it. Um, and that's kind of who I listened to when I did all this. So the whole reason I'm doing this, this these uh, hinge cuts in these areas to, is to provide bedding for the deer. Um, the best bedding around the area. I'm trying to make it perfect for them, you know. Uh, five star hotel. So you don't want to make them feel bottled in and enclosed. You got to make escape routes in these areas so they can get out, avoid predators. But you want it thick. So they feel safe. Um, I'm putting these in, in locations. One is by a road, okay? So they can kind of see, they can look out, they're near the road, they can see what's going on with other hunters, um, traffic, and whatnot. And they can run in this direction. And there's a uh, tamarack and black spruce swamp. I also have a trail along that swamp, um, a nice cut trail that they can kind of like a sneak trail. They can come through, the, the bucks can check this bedding area and head on to the next, which will be a food plot. Hopefully he'll come through here, check this bedding area, go to the food plot, the plum plot is what I'm going to call it when I start planting some plum trees there. But um, you want to kind of manipulate the deer's movement. And uh, I want the deer to bed here. I then I know where they're bedding. Um, so that's the idea. Anyway, hopefully it works. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, but uh, eventually, like I say, I'm going to come in here in the summertime when the leaves are growing, cut the trails through here, and design it exactly how I want. Right now, I just got the base. I just cut a bunch of trees. I'm going to come in here and clean it up. I'm also going to rake spots for for the deer to bed um, and that sounds crazy and maybe it is I don't know but uh, I read it in a book I'm gonna try it out you don't know if you unless you try it so that's what we're gonna do um, and uh, this is the first bedding area and now I will take you to the next food plot we went through the, the first food plot plum plot first bedding area and now I'm going to take you to the next spot that uh, we bulldozed. And that is going to be the pear plot. Now before we go to the, the uh, pear plot, we just left the first bedding area, which we'll call that the road bedding area. Um, it's 100 yards from the plum plot, the, my first food plot. And in between there, I have a mineral site that I'm starting. It's been here for a year and a half, and uh, they're hitting it pretty good. I'm using Redmond Mineral, which is like uh, a little over $10 for a 50-pound bag. And from what I understand, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as uh, Trophy Rock. It comes in a bag and a block form, um, so I bought both. So I put the 50-pound uh, bag down. I also put a block down. And I'm also going to top dress it with um, one of the more fancy ones. Um, there's Vitalize I'm using, and uh, also a buddy of mine, um, Ben's Trophy Mix, um, which has like a garlic scent to it, and that worked really good last year. Um, but it's more expensive, so I just kind of put about a third of a bag in each of my locations. I have three different mineral sites on this land between bedding and the uh, closest food plot to the bedding, I'll have a mineral site. And the other thing I wanna talk about is making uh, scrapes. I'm gonna try this out, uh, a guy named Jim Ward does this. He, he puts like uh, 
wire across two different trees at eight and a half feet and then at eight feet between two trees and then he'll take branches and hang them from the trees zip tying them on those two um, wires and then cuts the bottom of the branch at shoulder height and he spaces the branches out about 18 inches or something like that so you got two two trees about eight feet apart and um, you you put however many branches that is and below it the idea is it's, it'll be a giant scrape and uh, it'll be a social hub for the deer again trying to manipulate the deer's movement and having the bucks check those areas and maybe put in a tree stand there you know I won't hunt it a ton I don't want to over hunt these areas but uh, it would be a spot to hit you know during the rut if the conditions are right the wind and everything but um, I'm gonna try that out see how it works there's also horizontal rubs that people are doing where you wire uh, a softwood like a pine or whatever horizontally and I'll show that too I'm gonna try that try all this stuff see how it works um, but uh, anyway now we're gonna head to uh, my pear plot which is about a hundred and fifty yards away from this first food plot um, and hopefully the deer toward the end of the day will end up in that food plot they'll start in the bedding hit the plum plot go to the pear plot I also have a little apple orchard there um, next to it and I'll, I'll show you that too um, but anyway all right let's go so right now I want to refer to this little map I drew um, to just put everything on paper and uh, make it clear in my mind because I have all these ideas you know more and more ideas pop in your head and I just wanted to put it all down so I can see it so it took me like an hour to draw this up but anyway um, so we started here's the road and this line is my driveway and here's my cabin this there's some of this is a little bit off but anyway you get the idea um, there's this is the food first food plot the plum plot about 100 yards away is the bedding area that we cut. This is low stock hardwood and it's hardwoods on the property and I got this from the forestry um, little makeup that they did when we bought our property. Um, these are more mature hardwoods here. The bedding is here, there's the mineral site here and I'm gonna put the scrapes and rub tree here. I hope that the deer come from the public land over here, through the woods, the bucks I should say. Check this bedding area. Also the deer that are in here, the bucks and does, can have a good source of minerals close by. And they'll head to the first food plot. And that food would be like clover or a summertime annual or perennial and I want the real candy food the brassicas winter peas and whatnot to be in this food plot so they'll end up here toward nightfall I may transition cut this area transition hinge cut here and here but I haven't done this yet this year there's a little grove of hemlocks here. I have a trail cut all the way through here and out. So it's an easy route for the deer to take. This is all swamp, tamarack, black spruce. I'm also gonna do um, scrapes here, mock scrape and mock uh, rub I guess you'd say and I have two apple trees two pear trees here a little trail entering this food plot and again this location and this location hopefully the deer utilize during the day light hours and come in here during evening um, we're at dark it's a little bit larger it's closer to the house they might not feel as safe but hopefully in these areas they do so I can intercept the deer here I'm thinking about putting a tree stand here 
and I already have one here with shooting lanes about 150 yards this way and 200 yards this way. I'll continue cutting those through the swamp for, for gun hunts. But this is a, a bow shot to the apple orchard, small orchard there. There's pears there too. But that's just a little heads up as we go through the video. All right, we just came from that direction along the swamp. This is a tamarack and black spruce swamp. I have a trail cut along the edge. I use one of those uh, steel giant uh, weed whackers that have like a saw blade on them. Um, that's what I use to make the trails through the woods. Um, but anyhow, I have a trail going through along the, the uh, swamp and it ends up, there's a tree stand right there. It ends up in this little orchard. I have two pear trees and two apple trees planted right now. Planted last spring. I uh, fenced them in. I, I cut this area to let light in. And uh, I hope to plant two more apple trees in here this year. But I gotta check on what apple trees um, pollinate the other ones and stuff like that. They say that the uh, you shouldn't grow apples for about the first five years after you plant a tree because you want all that the nutrients and stuff to build the size of the tree and not the three or four apples it's going to produce. So anyhow the, the design of this is they'll come out from this area where we walk through before past that tree stand I'll put a scrape tree and a, a rub tree here and into this area which I might throw some uh, clover down around these apple trees um, I then had the bulldozer come in and make a food plot 80 yards to our east which is to the right here and he also made a trail come out of the food plot into this little orchard so I can get my tractor back here. Now we'll walk down this trail and into the next food plot which I'm going to call the pear plot. All right now we're coming into the food plot. It's not very big it's just under a quarter acre And back this way is the orchard down that trail, about 80 yards away. Now I've hinge cut on this side to let in the evening light from the west and also to screen this food plot from the orchard. So when I come in to hunt it, I'll be coming in right there and the driveway is right along here. My cabin is that way, about 175 yards. So as I come in, I have that area hinge cut so they can't see me when I'm in the, on the driveway. And then when I get into the food plot and get into my tree stand, if there's deer in the orchard, hopefully I'll be hidden from them also. All right, now we're on the driveway, right outside the pear food plot. I've hinge cut this front area to screen myself as I come in. Hopefully I can see the deer before they see me, if there are any in the field. I cut some here to do the same thing. And now as you go in the plot, I've hinge cut the far side to screen it from the orchard behind. And I also had the, the uh, dozer operator put everything 
on the south side. And what that does is screen me from the deer in the woods coming from that direction because my other food plot, the plum plot, is about a hundred and actually about 200 yards in that direction. Now my idea is to put a tree stand in a maple tree right back here. My, the swamp comes in real tight to the driveway right here and I don't foresee the deer traveling from that direction into this plot very often. So I can hunt this plot with a south wind. Now speaking of wind, I don't know where these guys on TV hunt, but when I'm in the woods during a hunt in my tree stand and uh, the wind is changing all the time for me I don't know you know you're, you're it's coming from the south and then 20 minutes later it's coming from the north you know but I'm gonna do my best I'm gonna wake up in the morning and in the evening look at what direction the, the wind is coming from and I'm gonna hunt a certain stand depending on it now I know it's gonna change that's why I gotta you gotta do your best with scent control and uh, I'll probably have a video on my scent control system or whatever. But um, you you, you want to try to play the wind as best you can, but um, you know it, it changes all the time. So you, you gotta you still have to use really good scent control. So um, that's my spiel on that. Now, if you guys are wondering why I have a a gun with me, it's it's April in Wisconsin. And the bears are out. And uh, last year at this time, I had a black bear chase me and my dog. Um, he was about 60 yards away, running toward me. I had a 22 with me, um, not for bear protection, just just for whatever I see in the woods. But um, that's why I carry a gun now. I took off running. I don't know how far he got chasing, but I wasn't looking behind me. So that's why I carry one nowadays at least until around summer. So that's why I got the, the hand cannon. All right, now we're walking up to our, our cabin and where we will eventually be building our cordwood house. I'm going to uh, attach it to the, the cabin um, and it'll be right there. It'll be on a slab and there will be uh, a second story um, with the master bedroom and stuff like that but uh, that'll be a whole other set of videos we're slowly working toward that we get a five-year plan six seven who knows but uh, we're first gonna start on a cordwood sauna that's gonna sit right there so we're gonna get our feet wet building that and uh, practice with cordwood construction and then move on to the house. So we've got a lot of crap here right now. There's nowhere to uh, keep stuff. Here's my uh, ice shack. I'll probably do a little video on, on how I built that, but um, we got our outhouse and that was left for us when we bought the land. That beauty. So we pretty much use that as a storage for right now but it's starting to leak, so I don't know, we got another year, and then I'm gonna have to pull that out and get rid of it. Um, I use a lot of uh, reclaimed wood and stuff that I find in job site dumpsters for tree stands and, and uh, different projects. I just uh, built that carry-all yesterday for the tractor. And this is our little log cabin. It's uh, 20 by 15. And that is Euchre. Euchre. That's Euchre. Like Bob Euchre. The brewer's announcer. So, the land next to us is right there and it was just clear cut this winter. 
So in a few years, that is going to grow up to be a thick, nasty brush. And the deer are going to love it. They're going to have plenty of food and cover. And that is all the more reason why I have to put these bedding areas in to make an area that's even better than that to bed in. Now, come gun season, they'll be running in there and hiding. And we know that, but there's really nothing we can do. One good thing it did though is provide tons of browse this uh, winter for the deer. There was over 50 deer when you would walk around the woods around here feeding on this. So it uh, fed them through this tough winter we had. So that's good. But uh, we'll walk a little bit further down here. That's the front part of the land. Like I say, we have 200 acres here and we're about a third of the way back. I'm uh, also going to build a little barn right here out of uh, tamarack trees that I have cut. I got to cut a bunch more, but uh, that's going to house the, the tractors. And I'm going to build a small woodshed right behind the tractor there also. So those videos are to come. All right, so now we're gonna go around our pond, look at the, the two food plots. There's one on the south side, one on the north side. There's a little cabin I built. We'll do a little spiel on that, but uh, we'll take a walk around that. The uh, pond is actually only about 100 yards from the cabin. So we're gonna walk down this trail, go on the south side all the way around to the north side. So stay with us. All right, we're at our little uh, cabin by the pond. Um, I gotta back up here. Here's a little floating deck that hasn't quite melted yet. But uh, how this all started was my wife wanted that in the pond. And then I, s because I've been building everything and doing everything for the deer and my own shit. So, I built this for her. And I've seen many men, they become hard as nails. to a jail and I decided well we're never going to use that thing it's going to be too hot in the summer so let's build a like a gazebo a uh, screened in gazebo on top of it so I built the walls for it and I built it as light as possible when I got three walls on it it was already sunk down underneath the treated support supports were underwater a little bit with three walls i still needed to build a roof and put people on it and furniture so that wasn't going to work out so i had to take the walls back off um and i decided well what am i going to do with the walls now we'll build a spot on land and not only will we build that, we'll build it bigger. So I built it two feet longer. It's 12 by 14. And then since we're building on a land, why don't we just insulate it and build a damn cabin? So here's a little cabin that we built. The floor is insulated with pink foam underneath. Um, the floor is just standard pine boards. Right now we had to wrap it because deer season came and we don't do projects during deer season. So it had to weather winter time. So it's gonna have two three by three foot windows there, four foot by four foot windows there, two more three foot by three foot windows there. And then I'm hoping to put some like triangle windows up there. And then we're gonna have 
two smaller windows there and there, and then a door on this side to come in, and a door to go to the floating deck through that door. And then I'm gonna put a little wood stove right there. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty cool. Watch the ducks on the pond through the windows. We'll look out to the pond. Now this pond goes a quarter mile. It's a quarter mile long and uh, it's only, I don't know, 25 yards wide. It's almost like a river. But uh, we'll take a walk down that right now. Now this is the start of the South Pond food plot. Um, this is the, one of the first ones I did last year. Um, it didn't turn out very well. I plant, planted brassica through here and uh, the soil wasn't as good. Um, the north side plot is over there and I'll show you that. We'll come in from the back side. But uh, the one side of the north side turned out awesome. The brassica was two feet high. The deer loved it. And then the uh, east side of the north food plot on the pond didn't do worth a shit either, just like this side. But um, this food plot is right across from the cabin, is right here. So um, here's a picture of that. So once that's finished, it'll be really nice. We'll be able to sit around there and hang out during the day away from the bugs, because there are a lot of mosquitoes around here. Little wood duck house. So that's the south food plot we just walked through. And right behind me, there's another little orchard. It has two apple trees and two pear trees. Um, and I'm gonna add to that. I'm gonna put some hazelnut um, bushes or trees around here too and I hope to plant some blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries along the pond on this side and a little bit on the other side too. Naturally they do grow here but um, I'd like to just plant a couple of the store-bought ones. Maybe they'll be bigger and stuff so. Um, but anyway we'll head to the uh, orchard. Next um, I do want to plant continue planting this because I thought there was going to be a lot of raspberries in this area and there wasn't so I, I left it but I'm going to plant all the way to that uh, cut down that dead pine and plant all the way to this pine tree here this year and I'm going to plant this in uh, clover because it didn't grow brassica last year so I got to build the soil a bit on this area uh, probably some rye grain and red clover is what's going to go in here and then I'll plow that down. Um, actually, I might leave it for a couple years, but uh, I gotta research that more, see what I have to do. So this is the uh, small orchard. There's um, two pear and two apples right behind me in a line. I also have a tree stand right there. I don't know if that's gonna stay or not. Uh, I only hunted it once. Um, I didn't see any deer. They winded me actually from across the pond. You can actually shoot across the pond on that stand, which will be really good, but you gotta play the wind. Um, and I didn't that day, I guess. So I never did see deer, but they snorted at me from inside the swamp. But um, I'll leave it there for next year. Hunt it a couple times, see if I wanna keep it. Um, I also cut down a lot of tamarack on this side. This is the Tamarack Black Spruce Swamp. And uh, I cut all that down to let in light because that way is south. So those trees were butted right up against this, these food plots in Apple Orchard or Orchard. And uh, it was blocking the light, you know, during the fall time of year. So <clears throat> cut a bunch down about 20 yards in um, all the way down to the beginning of the food plot, all the way to the orchard, 
and uh, I'm gonna use a lot of those trees come in with the tractor pull them out um, we put them into the, the pond and actually canoe them down to the you know where we pull them out at the end of the pond uh, real quick I gotta show you the logs at the end of the pond piling up I see that there's three two by the cabin and one's hung up oh, I'll get that tonight or maybe tomorrow but yeah I didn't have to do anything just drop them in the water and let it do its thing so I'll uh, pull them out of here get them out of the water tomorrow I can't get the tractor across by the cabin I actually have to go all the way around the north side of the the pond and come in from this direction with the tractor so it's easier to put the logs in the pond and on a windy day I can actually drop them in and let them do their thing till they get to the other end of the pond wake up the next day and they'll be at the other end of the pond I'll, I'll hook up with the tractor and and pull them out um, so it actually works pretty good but I'm gonna build the wood sheds and stuff from that that lumber it's supposedly uh, pretty rot resistant tamarack so and they grow straight so um, that's the plan there we're gonna continue on and go around the end of the pond uh, there's an area where we call the bear bait and I'll show you that next <laughs> Now at the end of the pond, or actually the beginning, because the water flows in from the swamp here, it's right in the middle of a tamarack black spruce swamp. It was actually man-made. Um, I guess they took a bulldozer down here and just pushed everything to the side. That's why the, the sides here are, you know, humped and dry land um, and not boggy. You know like this you can actually walk in there during the summer or actually right now with a, a pair of leather boots and, and not get wet you just have to pick your way through so it's not like a you know horrible but uh, anyhow right here I made a, a little bridge to get my tractor across with tamarack logs that I just kept on laying down And if I die, who will tell my children, who will be by their side? And I said, hang on, hang on, black lung Although I should probably will have to pick those back out and put a culvert in there because you can see the water running in right now. So I gotta make a spot for that. But right up here is a little hemlock grove and uh, we call this the bear bait area. The uh, previous owner baited bears here. It's pretty neat in here. There's his logs. I don't know where his tree stand was, but uh, right up through here is the end of our land. So. The pond is the width of the land. It's a quarter mile long almost. And right here is a finger that they clear cut through the, the uh, tamarack swamp. It's about 50 yards wide and uh, a half mile long. And this is about right in the middle of it. And there's a little hardwood knob that goes across. So I am going to build an enclosed tree stand here in the future I don't know if I'll get to that this year and uh, then wool bait bears here and also the deer from the neighboring land travel through this little hardwood knob and into my food plots now again that's the south side all the way down there is the the orchard and then the south food plot and then right over here, right away, 
starts the North Food Plot. And it travels about three quarter of the way off and on along the pond. And I will show you that now. The first part we planted in Brassica and it grew great. And then the last part, it didn't do so hot. Now this is the beginning of that food plot. This is what's left. There was two foot high brassica. I planted a antler king honey hole in here. Um, the deer ate, just like it says, once, once the frost came in, a couple good frosts, the deer came in here and just mowed it down within, within three weeks it was gone. Um, it's not a large area. It does continue farther than you can see. Um, it ends up being about a quarter acre. Obviously, it's not a very wide food plot. It's just very long. Um, I was going to take out all these trees and make it larger, these pines and stuff, but uh, because I had the bulldozer come in and do all the other food plots, I'm going to leave them. My plan is to someday, when I get good with the recurve, working on it, I'm going to sneak down this along these trees and... Uh, shoot a deer. I don't even care what kind it is as long as I get it with my recurve. But um, you can see there's a lot of deer droppings and there's hardly anything left. Now they didn't eat the turnips like I, I thought but um, from what I understand you know the deer don't even know up here what a turnip is. Of course they didn't know what brassica is either but they don't have to dig to try for that. To try it out but um, they ate a little bit of the turnips but as I grow more of them I think they'll get used to them and they'll understand that it is a, a food source for them one thing I should point out real quick uh, as far as planting any type of brassica apparently you're only supposed to plant it two years in a row and then you have to cycle your food plot because if you plant it any more than that there's like disease and, and insects and stuff that'll come and and uh, start wreaking havoc so in this area I haven't decided if I'm going to plant brassica again or I may plant uh, Austrian or Austrian peas I think it's called like winter peas it's a, a another mix that I got from uh, farm and fleet but uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but don't plant brassica more than two years in a row. So the remainder of this north food plot, um, north side of the pond, didn't do well. It did this, the same as the south side. Um, again, I planted with, with the uh, brassica. Now the south side I planted with a product from uh, Bio, Biologic Maximum, and uh, it didn't do well, and, and I'm not... Uh, ragging on biologic for that I, I think is the soil and stuff um, but uh, I'm gonna build this soil too with uh, red clover and uh, rye grain so we'll continue through this then it's it's at the beginning of the uh, pond again at the dam and hang on, hang on. all right that was the trip around the pond and the the two food plots on either side and now we'll head in the back of the land and take a look at all that all right this trail going up the the hill here i planted this entire thing in um clover um so i do have to cut some trees along the trail to let light in um this year because it didn't grow very well um most spots didn't because it didn't get enough light. It's a logging trail, but uh, I'll remedy that this year. So um, the entire length until I stop will be planted in clover. So this enters into uh, little fork in the road. The trail goes that way. And it also goes that way. And um, it just makes a big loop. And it encompasses 
the center area, which is, a, I would say, about 30 acres. I have a uh, large 8x8 eight eight stand I built last year up here. And uh, I hope this is like a hub of deer activity because I have a bedding area down that way probably about 500 yards. I have a food plot over there we'll see in a second. And also right here, down that way there's two food plots, one small little forest food plot and then uh, a larger food plot. <clears throat> and then there's a small food plot down here. And I'll plant this trail and I made it straight. So it's also a shooting lane for this stand. I also had the uh, dozer operator clean this spot out. And uh, I'm gonna plant a few apple trees right there. Uh, three different varieties, one that drops early, um, mid, and then late season. So hopefully there will always be a tree drop in apples kind of during the season, extend it a little bit. I have to cut those trees. I'm actually going to use, that's a black ash right there. I'm going to use that and uh, this maple for that small little tractor shed I'm gonna build I think those are gonna be the uh, I'm gonna cut those with the sawmill the Alaskan sawmill into like an 8x8 beam is what my plan is to span the 22 feet um, that's how wide that shed is gonna be but this food plot <clears throat> I think we're going to plant cherry trees in there. So that'll be the cherry plot. And it's uh, quite small. And it butts up against the tamarack and black spruce swamp behind it. So we can take a look at that right now. Alright, so this is the what's going to be the cherry plot. I had him bulldoze this back here and there to make the, the deer feel safe in here. Hopefully they utilize it during the daytime. I did a little bit of hinge cutting back here, but I'm going to see what that looks like in the summer. I might do some more because I, I think the deer are going to come from this area. There's bedding way back there. It's got to be 600 yards or more. And there's also a food plot along that trail we had talked about earlier. That's our largest food plot. So what I think is going to happen, I got to check with the deer. I got to tell them what to do. But uh, I want them to hit that food plot right away, coming out of their bed, make their way to this food plot where I shoot them broadside at 20 yards, quartering away. And then, the ones who make it will go down that ridge, across the swamp, and to the food plot on the north side of the pond, which about 150 yards away starts the swamp, and the swamp is about two, 250 yards wide until they get to the north side of the pond food plot. And that's where I plan on planting the you know tastiest foods there the brassica um, winter peas stuff like that so toward nightfall they'll get to that plot or during the night because it's closest to the cabin they'll feel safer we won't be moving around as much and they'll use these food plots during the day and that's where I'll hunt them um, the logger took down a bunch of trees to make room for the, the bulldozer guy, um, and he brushed up. I had him cut 
the whole land, you know, different than he otherwise would. I had him take the tops um, and kind of make them lofty. Usually they drive over the top of those and, and crush them and they don't leave quite as much of the top and then uh, it rots quicker. But I didn't want that. I wanted to break the sight lines of the woods because it was so park-like when I, I got it <clears throat> that the deer didn't use this much during the daytime. So he brushed it to the side so when I come up the main trail, which is just by, beyond here, there's my tree stand. Hopefully the deer in this field, if there are any, you know, won't, won't see me get into my stand or whatever, or at least it'll help. So that's the idea there. I'm going to uh, set up a tree stand in one of these trees because there's also coming from the neighboring land, there's a, a hemlock over here and they cross the swamp. That's the shortest crossing there is to um, actual hardwoods. So at this point of the video, we've come up this trail. Here's where the apple orchard, little, those three apples are gonna be. Here's where my large elevated box stand is. And down the shooting lane and into this cherry plot. And the spot I'm talking about is right here. And it's just a little over a hundred yards. And we actually own the hardwoods on the other side of that swamp. Um, there's a little corner section that we own. So they, they come from that corner section. It's like a little little peninsula into the uh, the swamp. And I, I hope to have them. They have a, a nice trail there in the wintertime. Beat down pretty well. So I think the, the neighboring deer will pop out of there and the first thing they'll do is come into this food plot so south is to your right or north is to your right south is to your left so a north wind I'll hunt that tree stand or a north uh, east wind um, I can hunt this stand stop here for a second here's the trail down to the next food plot which again is a shooting lane during gun if I flip 180 there's my tree stand now you can see what a mess it looks like in these woods and it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's going to be better for the deer it thickens things up they feel safer they'll be able to move around in these woods during the daylight and do it more often than they did before I had them brush everything to the right because my bedding again is over here and we'll take a look at that in a moment but first we'll go down here and take a look at inside this food plot so this food plot is pretty large I think it's just under a quarter acre large for our property anyway now I took my uh, rangefinder and did length and width of all the food plots all the trails and then did the math square yardage um, divided that by what wh whatever the square yard of an acre is to find out the size of all these so I know how much seed to broadcast this one I think is just under a quarter acre if I remember right but I have to cut little lanes and all that brush so the deer can get in and out and they don't feel boxed in but when I come in here to hunt my stand I believe I will put one right up here for bow and hunt that with a, a north wind not very often though because the deer can come behind me on that trail so 
so it'll be more of a peak rut type deal. I won't hunt this a ton. They can come in here and eat and uh, feel safe. I don't wanna burn this spot out. But as you can see, it's gonna take a lot of drying before I can come in here with the tractor and disc all this up and, and level it. There's a lot of trees that came out, obviously. A lot of holes where the stumps were. I mean, some of these are like a foot and a half deep. And this is kind of a clay soil, so it's gonna hold water for quite a bit. I haven't decided what I'm gonna plant in this food plot. I might do uh, buckwheat and then plow it under and plant brassica. But uh, I haven't decided on that yet. The other thing I wanna say about this food plot is this is where we're gonna plant a bunch of apple trees. I'm thinking about six along the north and west side. So along here, spaced out about 20 feet apart up until there, space out six apple trees. This will be the apple tree plot. And now we'll head back down the trail. Take a left and head toward the other bedding area. So here's another one of my mineral spots I'm putting out. Again, that's a Redmond mineral block. I got a 50 pound bag of the granule Redmond mineral, which is a little over $10 for a 50 pound bag. And from what I've understand, it's the same as trophy rock, but because it doesn't have white-tailed deer on it and it's not, you know, marketed toward that, they don't charge you three times as much. So I also top dress this with either Ben's trophy mix or another product I'm gonna try this year is called Vitalize. Um, and we'll see how it works. Now, before, this is the first year I've used the Redmond Mineral, but last year I just put Ben's trophy mix out in these three different locations and I have tons of pictures. <laughs> deer and bear hitting it so I think they they like that garlic scent but uh, anyhow we'll go a little bit further here and let's see if we can still see my yeah we my stands through there we're about a hundred yards a little over from that Probably 120. Now we're gonna walk down this trail. And this is the back side of the neighbor's property. There's a couple hundred yards that way where they extensively logged. They didn't clear cut the back of his property, but they took out about 50% of the trees. And then they came in and did most of the logging on my land back here also so there's a lot of brush down in this area and the deer were feeding heavy you came back here as they were logging and and uh up until a couple weeks ago there'd be 40 deer back here the equipment was running around and you got 40 deer about 100 yards away from the equipment it was unreal We'll head this way a little bit further and uh, I'll show you this bedding area. All right, this is the bedding area where I, I butted up to the back side of the neighboring property. And that is, so the bedding is right next to his property, the deer, and I have it kind of open toward that direction. I didn't, um, hinge cut low or make what they call a gray area real thick. I want them to actually see into the neighbor's property, see what he's doing when he comes to, to hunt 
or whoever buys that property or whatever happens to that property. If there's a bunch of dudes, the deer will be able to kind of monitor them and uh, see what they're doing and run toward my land, you know, if need be. So, and then toward the trail and on that other side too, I'll have another trail that runs to a, a six by six box stand I have way over there. I have made a, a gray zone, a kind of an impenetrable wall of brush, or at least so they, they can't see. So I can walk down here and hopefully not be seen. Um, how I get to my stand is I have an e-bike, a fat tire bike that I ride down these trails. It's very quiet and it doesn't leave a lot of scent. I'll do a video on that. Um, but it works really well when you're, when you're on a bike or a four wheeler, if you've ever noticed, you can ride right by deer and they just sit there and look at you. You get off the bike or four wheeler and you start walking and that's when they run away. So I ride right past these, these deer a lot and they, they don't seem to mind as much. And I make less noise with the bike than with me walking. And it sounds different. They're kind of used to the crunch, 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 steady crunch of, of a human, you know, because that's how we walk. Squirrels, they intermittent walk. You could do that. I do that sometimes when I'm walking in the woods, so they think that it's a squirrel or turkey or something walking. But a bike, I don't think they really associate that constant noise and quick with uh, danger, at least not quite yet, but um, this trail I might plant in clover. It runs east and west and coming out of the bedding and heading toward the apple food plot over here, it would be a great ambush spot. I just got to figure out the best tree to use. Um, I might, when I get my new tractor, I'm, I'm hoping to get rid of all these wet spots on the trail so it's not so muddy, put some dirt, fill in these areas. But I might create a watering hole off to the side somewhere. I'm also gonna do one of those scrape, scrapes between two trees in this area and a horizontal rub tree. All right, so now we're in that bedding area, um, right behind the neighbor's property. I have a, uh, box blind behind me that's gonna have to move where the hell is it yeah somewhere back there right there there um that was before all this happened it's kind of a disaster zone here um you can kind of see behind me he kind of lofted the tops up there wasn't a ton of trees that were suitable for hinge cutting so I just continued dropping larger trees to try to let in light open up the canopy and I still don't know if I have enough but I'm gonna wait this year call this good and see what happens this summer I don't know what this is gonna look like when when the leaves are out or when it leaves out but um, this is what I got so far it's about an acre and a half to two acres. They uh, naturally bed in this area before. This is a little bit higher ground. Deer like to bed on high ground and not that we have big hills here or anything, but even a few feet matters to them. So if they already bedded in here and uh, it's a location that I wanted to get them to bed in anyway, and they already did it. I, I made it even better for them. So when this dude's property grows up because it was damn near clear cut, it's going to be thick. The deer are going to love that. All the more reason that I have to make better bedding here. Now, they're going to run in there during gun season and, and hide, and we'll never see them again. But during bow, when their movements are natural, 
hopefully all this stuff I'm doing will work. Now, again, I have to come in here and make trails for them and clean all this brush up so they can get around easier, you know, around the trail system I make through here. I'm not quite sure what the deer are eating this time of year, but they're not eating all these buds off these trees. Or at least they've, maybe they've exhausted it already. Like I say, there was 40, 50 deer in here every day for about two months. So now we'll go back on the trail and keep doing the loop that I talked about because it connects back to itself right by the uh, 8 by 8 call that the chalet stand and uh, I'll show you the rest of that someday I'll go back and, and show you the six by six I have back here um, that was an awesome stand last year I've never hunted in these box blinds before I've always you know sat in the weather and I probably hunted them too much because it was kind of fun it was comfortable but uh, I won't hit them as hard this year but um, they were awesome you had deer walking right underneath them uh, underneath you and uh, the, the best thing about them is they contain your scent so you're not pumping scent out into the woods and uh, you know alerting the deer that you're hunting them so I was able to hunt it more than a stand that you're out in the open and I like that aspect of it so I'm going to make a few more of those two or three more around the land but uh, we'll head over on the trail now So here's another spot where I'm going to plant a little logging trail food plot. It'll only be about 50 yards long right there, hopefully. Um, it's usually not this wet there, but to be honest with you, I can't really remember since last summer exactly how wet it is. I did a little bit of cutting just over here to let in light from the south, or yeah, from the south. Um, I have a tree stand right here. That's a, a hawk tree stand. It's a pretty nice ladder stand. I got it at Farm and Fleet, and it was the same price as the Muddy ladder stand. Um, that's kind of similar, but it's a this one's a one and a half man. So you can get a real fat son of a bitch up there, and it's 20 feet high. And it was the same price, and it's definitely built sturdier than the muddy stands. Now, over here, there's going to be a trail that I got to cut in, large enough for the tractor, and it's going to get all the way back here, which I'm not going to go to today. I'll do that some other time. But it, um, I have a six by six enclosed stand there. It's on the other side of the bedding. The bedding is here. I've uh, downed trees to make it very thick. So I can walk down that trail to that stand. Um, probably won't hunt that stand as much as I did before because of the bedding right next to it. I'll leave that for, you know, late October, November stand when they start rutting. But uh, I think this is going to be a good, good spot if I get a little clover in here and again I'm gonna do another scrape tree within shooting distance of this stand so real quick the reason I'm, I'm doing this whole thing and I just want to if somebody starts watching my this these videos that I'm putting out going to start putting out um, they can refer back to this video and maybe it'll make more sense. Um, I'm hopefully going to put a picture. I don't know how to edit all these videos, so that's a work in progress too. So um, I hope to put a picture that I drew of this land. And uh, it's all kind of color-coded so I could see on paper, you know, what I'm trying to do. So I'll show that hopefully as this, this video happens. But, um, you know, obviously I'm no expert, but there's, there's guys out there that you can hire 
and and set your land up to do this and I'm guessing they're not cheap I never checked in on it because because I wasn't gonna do it but I mean these guys aren't scientists or anything they're just dudes who you know so I, I, I've read their books and stuff like that but when you hire somebody I mean who's to say he knows what the hell's going on you know we're talking about deer movement here you know we don't know exactly what they're gonna do we're just hoping to do the best you can so I'm trying to manipulate the the deer movement and uh, trying to figure out what how they like to do stuff and uh, um, change the land to enhance that I guess so um, I guess it'll make more sense when when you see the picture but we'll continue on this trail and we'll get to the the largest food plot which uh, I think is close to an acre um, and uh, that one I'm gonna plant in ne nectarines yep no peaches peaches that's gonna be the peach plot and uh, we'll go check that out right now so I'm gonna stop here a second this is we're going to the peach plot here but um, you can see behind me all the, the hemlocks. So this goes right past a big hemlock grove and those hemlocks go for quite a long ways. I would say 400 yards. I don't know exactly how the deer are using that area. To be honest with you, I've never put a tree stand in there. I haven't sat inside there a ton. They use it a lot during the winter time. There's less snow under here. I'm guessing there's like a little microclimate warmer spot underneath there. At least that's what I've read. I can't tell the difference on a 30 day below day, but uh, there is a lot of bedding right in here, right on the edge. That's where we just came from, down that trail. Um, but it looks cool. It's pretty to walk through during the summer. Um, anyway, as we walk down this trail, my last bedding area is right here that's butted up against the tamarack black spruce swamp i have a mineral site over here you round the trail and you enter my food plot about 200 yards over there and we'll check that out next we'll stop at the bedding area right now All right, so here's my other mineral site. It's the same as the other ones. And this is my final bedding area I made. It's only about three quarters of an acre or an acre. It's the smallest one. And again, I might add to these, um, depending on what it looks like come this summer. I'll put cameras in here, check the deer, you know, how they're using it and uh, do what I have to next year based on that info. I do have a tree stand back here about 400 yards and a hemlock behind this bedding area. I'm gonna leave that stand here this year. I'm gonna access it through these hemlocks and the trail that we took previously all the way around here into the hemlocks and into the tree stand. Uh, probably a, be a morning stand, hunt it with a east wind It'll blow my scent into the swamp there. And I'm hoping from the backside is the Flambeau State Forest. Um, bucks might come in to check this bedding and I'll intercept them on the way through. And I won't hunt that stand very often because uh, I'll most likely alert some deer in the area by using it. I don't want to burn that out. All these stands, or hunting this whole land I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna hunt it all the time I'm gonna hunt it about half the time half the time I'm gonna be on the public land we have chip land to our west state forest to our north and northeast and then one dude directly to our east owns an 80 um, so he's not up very often from the looks of it um, but uh, 
I'm gonna hunt the public half the time so I don't burn out my own woods um, on the best days or whatever. I'll, I'll come here, you know, I'll hunt it hard during the, the rut, but uh, I don't wanna pound, even, I know it's 200 acres, but um, it's not as big as you think. So, um, and I'm also making this into different sections. So the south part of the land before the cabin is one section. If I hunt that and I scare a bunch of deer, now I can go back in the northwest side, which is right where we are now. And I can hunt this area with its own bedding. You know, the front's got bedding, this area's got bedding, and then on the east side, I have that bedding. So if I bust them back here in the northwest, I could hunt the east side of the land. So as of now, we went around the trail, saw this mineral site, we saw this larger food plot. It's actually bigger than this that I, that I drew here. I drew this before the bulldozer did all its work. So these have changed a little bit. But anyway, this is larger. We went through here, we saw this bedding area. I placed it on the back side of this guy's property. This is the 80 that is our neighbor. Um, like I said, these deer can see him coming to hunt or whatever and, and run into our property. These are all the hemlocks that I had talked about. Um, in the future, I may do some transition hinge cuts through here to get to this food plot. And then from this food plot to this small one, which at the end of the video, we will end up in this food plot. Um, and then from this food plot to our largest food plot. The pink is kind of how I, I, I figured the deer movement will occur. They'll come through to these areas, to here, and then through this, which they've done in the past, last year, through the, the tamarack swamp to these food plots along the pond. And these deer, I figure, will come through these food plots. And as it gets later in the day, they'll make their way to here and then feel safer because we will have gone to bed or be winding down for the night, not making noise. The dogs won't be running around in the yard. Um, so I figure the deer will reach this area in the evening. Right now, um, we are here at this mineral site and this is the other bedding. Now when I'm talking about making different sections on the land, this is what I mean. This is a section. You can hunt this if you bust, if the, a deer busts you or whatever, you don't want to hunt there the next day, okay? You want to give it a rest for a week, so, or that weekend. So you come back here. Now this is a section, you know, this area. It's got its own bedding, it's got its own food plots. Or you could come back here and hunt this section. It's got its own bedding, it's got its own food plots. So I hope that different family groups are in these different bedding areas. And uh, that's one way I can lessen the impact I have on the land. Although, like I say, I will be hunting the public land half the time. So if I hunt a weekend, Saturday I'll hunt the public, Sunday I'll hunt my land. You know, so if you kind of break it up in sections and make your land in, into smaller sections and set it up that way, you know, you, you don't... Uh, you hopefully have different family groups, you know, utilizing your land. You can hunt different family groups. That's the idea anyway. So now we'll head around this corner. Start of the food plot is only a hundred yards away. We'll check that out next. All right, that was touch and go. It's a bit wet on that trail to pick my my way through here's the largest food plot I made this a a weird shape because I don't want to make a giant rectangle I shouldn't say giant it's only a half acre but uh, I think the deer will utilize it more 
if they're real close to be able to jump right into the woods instead of a larger open field. So I'm gonna cut like this, this section out to let in light into this area. I'm gonna put a tree stand in that hemlock tree right there. I think that'll be a good rut stand. The bedding is back there. I had them push everything here. So I'm screened from the deer back in the bedding. There's a nice skinny trail there, which uh, heads east and west. I think the uh, deer will come into that trail from the woods and then head up this way. And then hopefully I can get them from that hemlock. I think they'll feel safe entering the, the field there during daylight hours. And then you turn around and head this way. Now all this stuff I just showed you is new. This is the uh, older part. This is just a, a wide spot on the logging road. And I planted this in clover last year and it grew really well. The deer used it quite a bit, so. I added to it this winter. And this is the other side kind of a U shape and I hope to plant like I say peaches in here we're planting the peaches back here because my wife don't doesn't like peaches so we're gonna plant them farther from the house that's how they ended up being back here um, this wraps around I have some trees to cut right here to let in light to this field. This tree stands moving. I don't think that's going to be in a good spot anymore. We're going to put that by the uh, bear bait stand or bear bait area that we had talked about earlier. But I am going to build a box blind. Somewhere on this side. And I'm hoping the deer will come from the apple plot, which is over there. You can kind of see the uh, opening in the trees. Apple plot, 300 yards that way. Come through the woods. I have a tree stand right there. And then uh, I'll hunt that sometimes. And then I'm gonna put a box blind somewhere in here. And it'll be good gun hunting spot because um, there's no real good wind to hunt this food plot. The deer can come from anywhere, honestly. They could come from the bedding from the north. They could come from the apple plot to the east. They could come from the bedding from the north. The north side, walk along the swamp over here, and then come in from the west into this plot so I, I'm not sure where they're gonna come in you know I don't have a good idea so I'm gonna build a box blind and I can contain my scent better so uh, now this trail continues on behind me and goes back to the chalet stand in a few hundred yards and I'll just do the time-lapse thing walk over there there is a small food plot that you'll see on the way and I'm gonna plant that in clover um, just for more nutrition. There's, um, you know, I'm trying to get as much, much food in here as possible because they don't have any fields around here. The closest agriculture field is, is three miles away. So that's why I'm doing all this. So we'll head this direction next. So here's that small food plot I'm gonna put in. 
I cut these trees down on both sides to open up the, the sky here. Let the light in. I gotta pick up all these logs when it dries out and I can drive my tractor that's not here yet. I bought a grapple for my Kubota that I'm getting. So I'll be able to pick these trees up and clean up all this brush everywhere you see throughout this whole land. I got a lot of wood to cut. I got a lot of sheds to build to put the wood in. A lot of stuff to do. Um, but anyway, that's the the lay of the land. Here's the trail or the uh, tree stand again, the chalet stand. We're coming up to the fork right here. That's pretty much the, the scope of the property. All right, so we walked through everything. Um, hopefully that didn't wasn't too boring. I don't know if anybody will watch that, but um, but that's that's my plan. And uh, now we just have to put it into action with all these these food plots and, and plan them this year. See how much I get done. Like I say, we're a we're a month behind. I'm actually supposed to be in Jamaica right now, but we canceled our trip like three months ago, not knowing that this is the weather we would be having. So I wish we would have. I wish I was in Jamaica right now in a pool with a Bahama Mama in my hand and a big fat stogie, but we're uh, making the best of it. So I got a week off, um, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. I'll probably start liming some of these food plots. Um, I can do that, I guess. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come. All right, over and out. Oh, P.S. I got my shotgun with me because it's uh, my turkey season. As you can see, I'm taking it real serious, but I figured I'd make some calls, you know, walking around doing this, and I didn't hear anything. Last weekend, there was a gobbler and a hen right as I pulled into our cabin in the, uh, right in the yard, and they, they took off running. I've seen a few turkeys around here, but, you know, turkeys like fields and and shit and they're they're three miles away so I don't have a ton of experience with with hunting turkey and turkeys in this the big woods here but um, they are around they're not thick though but maybe these food plots will help they eat clover and all that stuff so um, anyway that's why I got the shotgun